Good morning, church. It is a good morning that we might uh, we might be here. Really, that we might just be here. We might find our way to this place. We might be able to, to arise from our beds, to arise and be here with one another, to be gathered in God's house, to come and know the presence of the Spirit with us. It is a good morning. And it is so often that as we begin our worship, there is a... a uh, some, you know, us mingling about, t- chatting with each other. Uh, and I would say, if that is the case, then worship has already started. For we come to, in faith and freedom and fellowship to, to, to worship and journey with one another. And so welcome, all of you, and all that this week has brought you. All of the difficulties and all of the wonders, come and lay them down here. And let the one who made you come and minister to you and bring you the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My name is Reverend Andy Stinson. I am the pastor here. If you are visiting with us, I invite you to fill out a card in the back so that we might get to know you a bit better. Uh, and that we might be able to keep in touch. We have a few announcements this morning. Uh, The uh, um, first, in the back, there are still some more of these, if anybody would like. This is a Lenten devotional. It's done uh, by congregational churches all over the country, Um, and it is a day-by-day prayer uh, uh, discipline uh, and kind of motivational discipline, devotional discipline, to keep... uh, to, uh, to be able to walk this journey of Lent that we are on toward the cross and Easter. And so if you'd like one of those, please take one. They're right, they're right in the back. Uh, also, um, next week we'll, beginning, uh, we'll be uh, starting up with, our, uh, with acolytes again. It has been a long time since we've had acolytes in our space, so that's exciting. So if, if you know someone, please have them reach out, uh, the, or one of our families that might uh, want to be a part of our acolyte ministry, um, uh, one of our kids, uh, then please reach out to them over this week. Um, Jackie is compiling the list and reaching out to folks, so, and uh, all that information is in the bulletin. Uh, also, this week, we'll, we're continuing with our uh, Lenten Bible series. Uh, last week, we had the Reverend Dr. Dave Bueller offer uh, thoughts on the story of Naaman. And this week, um, you're stuck with me, who will, I'll be talking about the Gerasene demoniac. And so you can, you can plug into that on uh, Zoom. You can kind of watch it in the comfort of your own home or wherever you, you might choose to do that. Or uh, you can join us here um, uh, sometime after 6 o'clock for a little bit of soup and, uh, and catch it live. So um, there's more information about that in your bulletin as well. Next week is our church meeting. Uh, I hope you will find you will uh, we'll have, uh, have a chance to come and see and be a part of how the sausage is made. Uh, if you take a moment right now and just look around, just look around, see all these the other people here, those are your bishops. Those are your monsignors. Those are your rulers that are running this place. Okay, there is no authority beyond these four walls and that which ga- that are we who gather at 282 Rock Street. We are the church in, com- in, in, in its completeness. And so, uh, so, uh, so it, it is our, tr- so when we gather to do our business, we gather not, not just to, to rubber stamp the ideas of some guy in a big tall hat or uh, some guy in a black robe, but we come to discern and to love one another the, uh, and the movement of the Holy Spirit in, uh, in our midst with each other. So it is, uh, so that, uh, that, will be t- that will be next week. So if you want to be a part of that. And lastly, I know it's a lot today, isn't it? The lastly, uh, the reports are in the back. So that uh, as all a part of that, if you want to see all of the, uh, um, so many of the amazing things, I was going to say all of the amazing things, but there is no way it would be this tall if we did all of the amazing things that, we, uh, that, act, that this church actually touched last year and this community re- uh, did uh, for each other, for God, and for our neighbors. Um, but a 
brief summary is found in our report. So um, please take one and uh, uh, in the back that if you'd like to, uh, uh, to read those as well. We can also email you one if you'd like, uh, just contact the office. I know it's a lot of announcements, but it is, it is glorious and good. It's great stuff that we might be here today, you, me, all of us gathered. What a gift. What a gift. So friends, in this gift, and all those who are worshiping with us on Facebook, with us, let us begin our worship. Please join me in the call to worship that you'll find in your bulletin. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. I will extol you, my King and God, and, and bless your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. God's greatness is unsearchable. Let's rise and join together in our opening hymn. It is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, number 19. Join me in the unison prayer of invocation in the Lord's Prayer that you'll find in your bullet. O oh, Jesus the Christ, let us fix our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith, 
who for in the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. Let us consider him who endured such opposition from evil, so that we will not grow weary and lose heart as we pray, as you have taught us, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. It's time for our children's talk. And uh, so those of you, I go back to my trusty jar of peanut butter. I've, I'm told this, is a, this has been discussed uh, that, uh, that, that there's a jar of peanut butter in the... But I, there is a jar of peanut butter because one of the things about a jar of peanut butter is that it's the, like one of the things that you need for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? And like if you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, the only way to get one is to open the jar. But you know what? Sometimes jars are really tight, aren't they? And so sometimes you think about it, you got your bread all set up, you got your jelly all set to go, and you're trying to get the, and you can't open the peanut butter. So what do you do? What, would, what do you do if you can't open the peanut butter? <laughs> he asks his wife to do it. See, that's a good idea. Get somebody stronger than you to do it. They find somebody else who can open up the jar of peanut butter. That, and the assay can ask for help. But sometimes jars of peanut butter just don't want to open. And sometimes we can think that like we failed, like we didn't get to make our peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Like, and so now we just have a jelly sandwich, which isn't so bad, really. But if that, sometimes we end up thinking that we can't get just through this little piece of tin to get the things that we want or are trying to work for. And even when we find other people to help us, maybe they can't open them up. But what we know is that even in the things that are open up to us, and even in the things that don't, God has worked for us. God is working for us in them. So that sometimes there are things in our life we really can't open. But you know what? That doesn't mean God does that, that God doesn't want us to get stronger by trying. God doesn't have all kinds of things going on behind the scenes about maybe why we can't get through our little tin lid. So my hope for all of you is when you're trying to find a, get your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you'll remember. And maybe if you can't open the jar, you'll remember you can always ask for help. And even if you all can't together can't get the jar open, that God is at work, even in the, in the lid that's too tight for everybody. All right, that's my hope for you today. Uh, but before we pray, I want to, uh, uh, we do have a birthday this weekend, and it is always my, uh, my commitment that if you have a birthday in the weekend and I find out about it, we will punk you out and sing happy birthday to you. Larry Lawrence has a birthday yesterday. And so let us sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Larry. Happy birthday.
All right, let's pray. Lord, bless Larry and his birthday. Bless all of our children and let them always know that you are with them in the open jars and the gooey, yummy peanut butters of life and also in the closed jars and the hard things that we struggle with. Always let them know that you love them and that you are with them. We pray this in your name and let the church say... Amen. That's outstanding. All right, you can head to... Sunday school, if you want to, we have now come to our time of prayer. What prayers would we offer today to our God? If you're worshiping with us on Facebook Live, please feel free to, to offer up uh, your prayers as well. What prayers would we offer to God? You. We will pray for Joe. Thanks. Father, we will pray for the homeless. Thank you. Other prayers this morning? Amy, thank you. Yes. We'll pray for Amy. Thank you. In his name? Mr. G we will pray for those in addiction. Thank you. for Bev. Yes, thank you. Other prayers? Sandy Angelo? We will pray for them. Thank you. Other prayers this morning? Continue to pray for Carol uh, and for veterans that have served our nation. And we will offer prayers for the success of the vaccines. Other prayers this morning. Let us go to our God in prayer. Lord, we come before you this morning with a part of all of us that is suffering, a part of all of us that is, that is aching with hurt for the, the sickness and the nation, for the difficulties of our, of our lives and those around us, for the, the hurt in the world. We, we, we see it. We, our eyes are not blind to it. And we ask that, uh, that your grace and your peace come and minister to it, that you might help us heal the world with you, and that we might not look away, not turn a blind eye, but we might have the courage to look squarely upon that which, uh, which needs that, uh, that his uh, healing may come and that your hand might be upon him. Lord, we pray for Mike and and his continued struggles that uh, 
that you surround him with your angels and your peace. We pray for the San D'Angelo family that in their, in, their, in their heartbreak and in their loss that uh, they may know they are not alone or, nor abandoned, but that you are, you are with them and that your healing is extended to them. Lord, we ask for your continued healing for Carol, that in these days that she might know your, uh, your, uh, you might surround her with your love and your peace. And you might hold dear my mom and dad, that, uh, that as they uh, uh, continue to, uh, to hurt and to struggle in this world, that uh, your peace might be upon them. Lord, in these days, uh, for those who are suffering from homelessness, let them have a home in you. And for those who are, uh, who are fighting addiction, may you give them courage and ability uh, to do so. Lord, in all these prayers, there are so many that, uh, that are upon us. Uh, and in our days, we ask, uh, we ask too, that you, uh, you let those who are working to overcome this virus come to, uh, to have true healing success with the vaccines that are that are being offered. Lord, in all these prayers, there's so much that we carry on our hearts and our minds. And we ask in this moment of silence that you lift up that which, which we would only lift up in the dark, which we carry upon our hearts and our minds uh, in, as our own personal burdens. And we'll let them be shared with you in this time. Lord, in all these prayers and the prayers that remain in our hearts and in our minds, we ask that your will, not ours, your way, not ours, not our way, be, uh, be in, your, uh, in your peace and your grace and your love. There is uh, in all that we carry, in all that we carry, O oh Lord, your divine providence, your Holy Spirit at work. Let us know it. Let us see it. Let us be a part of it in the, and give it the, given the strength and the will to look not away, but to embrace all that you would give us in roses and in thorns. In all this, O oh Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's rise and join together in our next hymn. It is As the Deer, number 351.
Our, our Hebrew scripture lesson this morning is the 22nd Psalm of David, but we, uh, that I wanted to give you it all, so it's all in the bulletin, but I, we, I'll read the selected parts of it. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May our hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to, the, to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. And the gospel this reading this morning is from the gospel of Mark. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they, and they answered him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and still other the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. And then he began to teach them that the son of man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. 
But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind on di- not on divine things, but on human things. And he called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who want to lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in glory of his Father with his holy angels. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Please be seated. We are on the second Sunday of Lent, and we point our eyes towards the cross and towards the empty tomb and the resurrection. This, these 40 days that we are in the midst of walking out, are these times, traditional times, ancient times. One of the very oldest of festivals within the church is that of Lent, from, of, of preparation, of consideration for this approach to Holy Week and Easter. I think about, I, I'm at a 10-year anniversary right now for 10 years ago, I was in uh, Baghdad, Iraq. Uh, we had been there about a month, and I, I, was, uh, I was the, uh, the senior medical chaplain for the medical task force in the country. And uh, we had uh, about a year of deployment ahead of us, or, or so we thought, at least. And that was 10 years ago. And, and anniversaries are a big deal, but 10-year anniversaries are, you know, they're a thing. Uh, and that... And that, uh, you know, one of the things I remember about that time is that, you know, soldiers being soldiers and warriors being warriors, they would kind of often adorn themselves in particular ways. And, uh, you know, everybody, pretty much everybody that was out and about wore, uh, wore body armor when they were. And, and on that body armor, there's, there's about a million different little pieces of Velcro that you can stick stuff on. Uh, that you can stick patches and identifiers and things like that. And, and so, you know, again, soldiers being soldiers, they would often uh, find, you know, have their own little signature tag made. That, uh, and many of them I could not repeat in church. Uh, but, well, I probably could, but it wouldn't be career enhancing. Uh, but but, uh, but, they, but uh, one of them that has always uh, stuck with me, and that, has, and that has actually grown into almost a movement uh, since the war in Iraq and the, the Operation Iraqi Freedom and uh, veterans that uh, was one particular little ribbon that I can, all, that I, that I can still see uh, stuck to one soldier's uh, body armor. And it said this, three simple words, embrace the suck. That, and, and uh, you know, and it actually, in many ways, there, there was a few others of them, but, but embrace the suck in some ways was the, the signature phrase for the Iraq war for, for, many, for many soldiers. Uh, it, you know, and, and every war had it. You know, uh, in Vietnam, it was ain't nothing but a thing. Like you'd hear that again and again. You'd hear uh, in in other conflicts they had that uh, in World War II it was foobar. That 
stands for something else. But there's, a, there's always these little phrases that soldiers would come up with when confronting great strife and great horror. And, and, I, there's, and there's actually now books. There is a fitness regimen that you can get that says about a brace the suck fitness regimen. And you can be, you know, you can be a hardcore war, warrior in, uh, um, with this modality. And, and there is a truth in it, which is, I think, the truth that Jesus is talking to Peter about today. And, and it is, but I think it's a bigger truth than just like, you know, the kind of the, the suck it up and drive on kind of modality that we think is that, that embodies. But there is a, I, I think it is at the heart It is at the heart of what it is to walk in this way of following Jesus. It is not simply this notion of just, you know, uh, just just be a little tougher, be a little stronger. But it is about how we are to negotiate the very difficult and real suffering of the world. Jesus asked them the question, who do you think, who do you say that I am? And they all kind of give their little answers. And, and, uh, but Peter is the one that comes out and says, you're the Messiah. Now, we have to understand what that means. Being the Messiah is about being the, about being the military leader that's going to come free them from the Romans. And... Jesus is teaching right after, right immediately after he says this. Now, everybody knows what the Messiah is, including Jesus. Everybody knows what the definition of the Messiah is. It's not like, oh, well, that's nice. We, 2,000 years later, having dressed it up in all of the niceties of Christianity, don't really get it. Like from what, what their perspective of what, when we talk about Messiah you want to think about Messiah, think about Norman Schwarzkopf going into Iraq. Think about General Petraeus. Think about General Austin. Those were messianic figures because they came wielding a sword, kicking butt. That's what they were doing. And that was, that was in the biblical framework, the messianic vision. And you know what? He, and, but what so what's Jesus' teaching immediately afterwards? And he's got this whole crowd here, remember. What does he say? He says, the Son of Man is going to be tortured, killed, rejected, and it will be resurrected in three days. This is not what happens to Messiahs, by the way. It's not okay. And it's not okay, not just for my Messiah to be the guy who's not in charge, but it's really not okay for me as a follower of that Messiah. Because remember, Peter has left his nets, he's left his whole life, he's left everything he's had, he took, he's at the blackjack table of life, and he's put all his chips on red Jesus. Like he is, he's out there, like he is, he, he's got one hand that he's playing. And all of a sudden, this, 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 he, he just seems like he just, he just, uh, he just, he just rolled a 13. Like, this is not good. Like, this, who is this guy? Like, he's supposed to be the one who's going to, who's going to save us from all of this suffering. And what does he say? No. Not only we're all going to suffer. He actually says, not only are you all going to suffer, which we, we might have been able to deal with that. He says, I'm going to suffer. As the Messiah, I will suffer in this life. And I will suffer extremely, and I will suffer to the end of the earth. And Jesus rejects, or, and Peter rejects it. He says, we can't, we can't have this. Like, he takes him aside. He says, this is bad, very bad for recruitment. This is very bad for morale. We can't have this. And Jesus ends up rebuking Peter. Now, this word rebuke, it's, you know, I mean, it's one of the horrible Bible words that, I, I, that, uh, that we, we, get, we get stuck with to one degree or another. But understanding that to be rebuked by your teacher, that, that Jesus is Peter's rabbi. So now understand, there's a whole bunch of rabbis running around, all of them with their little competing schools. And so you kind of linked yourself up with a rabbi. 
And remember, Peter was kind of recruited by Jesus to a degree. And so, so here's this guy that he kind of picked out and said, follow me. And, and so Peter does, with all these other competing schools around, if you get rebuked by your rabbi, it's not like you go down the street and get another rabbi. Because there's, they all talk. They all know. And, and in fact, the scribes and the Pharisees, that was part of their function, was to make sure who was on the in crowd and who was on the out crowd and all that. And so Peter has not only lost his livelihood, he's not only lost it, but, but now he's being rebuked by his rabbi. Now he's on the outs with the last thing that he has going. This is a huge deal. And it's all over this notion of whether or not Peter is going to be able to embrace the suck. Whether or not he's going to be able to embrace the fact that, 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 it's, that it is not about triumphing in this life. In the way that, we, in, that, that has traditionally, in the Old Testament version, that has, been, uh, that has been depicted. You know, it was said well by, by one of the historians that said, you know, and, and, it was, and it was true of the Romans as it was of all of those in the ancient world. They said the, of the, what was called the Pax Romana, the Roman peace. They said the, the Romans have created a desert and, and called it peace because the Romans just went in and killed everybody. Well, that wasn't, un, that, that wasn't necessarily unmessianic. Un, un that the, that the, 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 the Jews of, of Israel, had they gotten the chance with the Romans, they would have done the same thing. In fact, there were, there were numerous chan- you know, if you, uh, of chances that they tried to do it. And Jesus' rebuke is just right to the core. He says, you've set your mind not on divine things. Not on divine things. And then, what does he do? He turns back to the crowd. I mean, think about it. You know, like, your handler comes up. You know, you're like, he's got his little public appearance. He says something embarrassing. You know, Peter is the handler. Comes up and grabs him and says, Really, boss, we need to talk about your, your little off message here. We need to get back. We need to get you back on... Uh... And what does he do? He... he he yells at Peter. I, you know, I love the picture on the front of the bulletin. It's like one of these classic ones, but he's got like, he's giving him the finger. You know, he's like, boo, get behind me. And he's, you know, and the face is just perfect. That, that, uh, that, that just enough disdain of like, yeah, like, I'm not listening to you. And he turns around back to the crowd. Like he's going to double down on this. He's literally, like now, like think about Peter. Like, boo, like he's just melting. Jesus suggests denying themselves and taking up their cross. If it was in the French Revolution, it would be Jesus saying, deny yourselves and go to the guillotine and pick up your guillotine. If it was uh, in another era, it would said, pick up your pick up your firing squad and follow me. Like it's this, it's the pick up the thing that is going to kill you and follow me. And then it's the great and grand line of who will gain the whole world but forfeit their life. And this is really what it's all about. It's that, that it is this notion of when we're, and I think this is the deep spiritual reality we're talking about here. This, again, this isn't just necessarily like the warrior mindset where, you know, a kind of a, a, you know, a, a little bigger, better, t- you know, version of Tony Robbins with a, you know, with a, you know, flak jacket on. Like, it's not that. It's this deep reality that the meaning of our lives, the meaning of our lives comes through our suffering. That the that the very the very life that we live comes in the fact that we're stru- we're born in struggle. We're going to struggle through this life. We're going to suffer in this life, and we're going to continue. That, that now, don't hear me being a Buddhist. That does not mean all life is suffering. Anybody who's ever fallen in love knows that there are some pretty nice moments in this world, and you get that face in front of you, and like 
you know, and like you're all in love and like it's all sweet. Like there's some really good stuff in that. There's some gorgeous and beautiful things in this world that is not all suffering. But the way of our meaning, the way to the the way to the resurrection is not around the cross. It's not over the cross. It's not under the cross. It's not around. It's through the cross. It is not looking away from the hard things of our life. Now, this truth, the, the, the warrior class, as I talked about, has embraced that truth in, in Iraq because, it was, it, because it's a truth and it works. But, I, but it is so much deeper than just getting yourself out of bed to go for a run or dealing with tragedy in, the, in, in life. It works for that. It works for that. But I, I, don't want, I, I don't want you to hear it as this self-help option. I want you to hear it as the hard reality of the world. And that actually the way in which in this Lenten season, Jesus calls us to walk right into the center of the 22nd Psalm. So I gave you the whole Psalm because it's just so good. And I hope sometime this week you'll go and, and just read through it because it's rich in a way that is powerful. But the thing about it is, has anybody recognize those opening lines? My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? You ever hear them anywhere? They're the, they're the words Jesus says on the cross, aren't they? Now, remember, psalms were never spoken, never, ever, ever, ever in the ancient world spoken. They were always sung. What is Jesus doing in the most powerful, cogent, crisis of his entire life in incredible pain and suffering. What is he doing? He's singing a song. He's singing a song. And he's not only just singing a song, but he's singing this 22nd song, which is, has been the, most, the, the single most misunderstood thing, I think, in Christianity in a, lot of, in a long time. If that This notion that he is having this, like, uh, this little, little kind of uh, quarrel with his father. He's like, Look, Dad, why did you forsake me? My God, my God, why did you forsake me? But the thing is, the whole psalm is not a psalm of forsaking. It is a psalm that starts at forsaking. It ends where? At the grand declaration that says, proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that God has done it. It's a victory song. This is Rocky. Dun, 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 dun. Like, this is it. That's Rocky. That's, that, this is the Rocky theme song of Bible. And yet, what do we find ourselves in? We find ourselves reading this and, you know, we, we claim the first line and we're like, oh, it's so bad. But, you, the, but the whole psalm, Jesus is saying, Jesus is hanging on the cross, stabbed in the side, declaring all of the bad things that happened to him. This is why I want you to read this. I wanted you to have this psalm in front of you because, again, there, all of these little horrible things that he details is happening that is written in this psalm that were written 700 years prior to this are happening to Jesus right then and there. His bones, if you're being crucified, your bones are out of joint. Jesus died not of crucifixion, but he died of a broken heart. My heart has turned to wax. It's melted within my breast. My mouth has gone dry. What are some of the other words? I am thirsty. If you read it, you realize this is the perspective of somebody being crucified. He is, Jesus is modeling on the cross what he was telling 
Peter to, to get on board with, which was this sim single and simple reality of look, embrace the suck. I'm going to embrace it so much that I'm going to go back to my songbook and I'm going to pick out the hit that has, that has actually the description within it of all the things that are happening to me. And I'm going to sing that at the moment that I'm being hurt, at the moment that I'm being pierced, at the moment that I'm being crucified, and the moment that I'm going to death so that I, we may know resurrection, that all humanity may know resurrection. Now, what does this look like for us? I think it looks like sometimes the most, might be the most mundane thing in your life. You ever been in an interminable meeting? I mean, like one of those really ones that drag on. If it was a church, please don't tell me. Um, if I was in it, really don't tell me. Uh, but what would happen? I just invite you to this. What would happen if you were in one of those interminable meetings when somebody who's up there in love with the sound of their own voice was just kind of droning on, that everybody knew the information was already there, like you were in a meeting that could have been an email, like that kind of, that kind of event? What happens if you engage that meeting and you embrace the suck? What happens if you lean into that meeting and instead of start talking about the things that everybody knows already, you actually talk about the things that, really, that, are, that are really, really important? What if you actually started to talk about, you know, and, and I understand that, that when we start talking about living this way, you know, the, 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 the old adage from Jesus starts to come, you know, that, that, uh, that the truth will set you free, you know. It will set you free from jobs. It will set you free from relationships. It will set you free from all manner of things. But that, and I understand that, that. But what would happen if we actually paid super close attention in those moments when it, things just got boring and we started to engage with our whole self? What would happen to our world? What would happen to our lives? I, we think about it as the suffering of, like we, of what... Of, our, of, you know, being pierced to the side and being hung on a tree. But, but, I, but, 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 but there are plenty of sufferings in this world. There's plenty of them. And that, we, and that if we embrace them. You know, the great David Goggins says that uh, we are a culture that is in love with mediocrity. And I love that phrase because I think it's true. We reward mediocrity. I saw it in the army all the time, and I'm sure you've seen it in all kinds of places. There would be soldiers that would go to all the right schools. They would do all the right things. They would never go for a particularly challenging assignment, but they would just continue to, and by God, you'd be working for that person before too long. That, that, uh, because they, were, they simply were, were shooting, shooting at the center of, the, of mass all the time. They were, just, they, were ne they were never excelling anything, but all their numbers were just right grinding along. Christianity may be many things. Jesus' call to us may be many things. The invitation to the cross may be many things. But friends, it is not mundane, nor is it mediocre. It calls us. And if we really want to live this life, like this is what Jesus is saying. Our life, our life, our life force, our engagement of life, our enjoyment of life is in this embrace of our suffering. Having spent time as a hospice chaplain, I've watched people die again and again and again. And it was those people, the people who were best at it, were the people who knew it was coming, embraced the reality, and started working and holding and all this sort of stuff. It was the people who went, ah, that actually had the hardest time. Friends, rebuke your Peter this Lent. Rebuke your Peter. Tell him to get in the back seat. Give him the high ho. Tell him to go. There's that, that voice within you which would just say, let it alone. Let it, let it go. Let it, it's all right. Just get through the meeting. Just get through the thing. Just do whatever you need to do to get through. Do not let the mediocrity of the world affect the, the living of your life. The joy in which God wants to infuse you with. Uh, through, through engaging honestly and faithfully and truly the sufferings of your days.
let go of that voice that that your your internal handler that just wants to get you through to the next event but open to yourselves the one who would declare and point to the cross and say this is the way not because life should be hard but because there are hard things in life that we can and will and are promised to overcome that we have in those grand words proclaimed his deliverance to a people not yet born saying that God has done it. Amen. We now come to our time of offering. Our offering is, uh, we collect these days in, in the uh, boxes in the back. Uh, and I want to, I, but I invite you in, in your spiritual offering in these days to offer up a rebuke to your Peter. Offer up a rebuke to that voice within you that would be anything less than that which God calls you to confront in all the ways of your life. So come, let us offer our gifts.
these gifts go forward and let them help those who are struggling embrace their struggle. That in their in the work that they might do, that your your love and your grace might find them in that which they they work against. Let those who are trapped in despair know your hope. Let those who are without shelter know your love. Let those who are who are in need of your gospel, which is each of us, be used by by you and be offered the grace of these gifts, magnified by your promise to go forward and do great things. We pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray together and close these names. It is a summons.
Go forward with the grace and the peace of the one who made you. Go forward, know with the full confidence that there is no harshness, there is no suffering, there is no brokenness that cannot be overcome through the cross, to the tomb, through the resurrection. Go forward and spread that love and grace and that good news about all the earth. Amen. Thank you.